Good morning or afternoon, uh, depending on wherever you are. Um, my name is Amy Harold, and this is Hi, my name is PowerShell. Let's be friends. Let's see here. All right, so quickly, who am I? Uh, like I said, my name is Amy Harold. I am currently a consultant with Fortified Data. Um, if you are on Twitter, um, I am Texas Amy on Twitter, so go follow me. I tweet. Uh, about SQL Server and, and, and other things occasionally. Um, currently blogging not as much as I should over at SQLKitten.com. Um, in my previous role, I was coined the most uh, the meanest DBA in the world. This happened after we our SQL developer on our team. He uh, had revised some code and refactored it and got it down from several minutes down to 30 seconds. I said, can we do better? He didn't appreciate that as much as I did. So. Uh, then later on, I reset his password to our, our PDW appliance because he, he forgot it. And I reset it to don't forget your password, but with a little bit of a redneck spin, so it was don't forget your password. Anyways, so um, that's a little bit about me. Who is this session for? Um, this is a very, very, very beginner session. This is for PowerShell noobs. Um, maybe you've opened the ISC or a, a, just a regular PowerShell window, but you don't really know where to go from there. This is the session for you. So um, I've been um, doing PowerShell for a number of years now and, and, and in various uh, roles and, and for various reasons. Um, so I've, I've learned a lot along the way. And this is, this is kind of uh, where this session evolved from, just my experiences in using PowerShell. So the agenda for this session, uh, first a little bit about what is PowerShell. Then followed by getting started with some gotchas uh, that you may run into when using PowerShell. Um, then followed by some basics of PowerShell, some you know syntax, things like that. And then we'll just go straight into uh, a whole bunch of very relatively simple demos. All right, what is PowerShell? Uh, PowerShell was first released by Microsoft in 2006. It was their answer to the Unix Linux shell. Um, within PowerShell, it, it's based on the .NET architecture, so you have access to things such as uh, component object model classes or Windows management instrumentation classes. Um, PowerShell allows for you to manage servers remotely. So, you know, being a DBA, um, that, that's been my primary role. Um, I have always needed to, in, in many cases, manage uh, one server or multiple servers uh, remotely, and I found uh, it's far easier in a lot of cases to run a PowerShell script against a list of servers than it would be for me to have to use SSMS and access them one at a time, or, or even so far as going through and accessing multiple servers from a, a, a CMS instance. Um, you know, you know, you may have one of those set up. You may not have one of those set up, but just depending on your environment, PowerShell can be a great asset to a DBA as far as uh, remote administration. So, uh, SQL Server support for PowerShell came about in 2007, but it was only for SQL Server 2008 on Windows Server 2008. So since then, uh, it has evolved. You know, PowerShell uh, fully is fully supported within the all the current SQL Server uh, versions. Um, PowerShell within PowerShell, you have commandlets, and working with commandlets, you may um, take several of these, and combine these, and to create scripts within PowerShell. Um, you know, as DBAs, we always want to script things out and say them for later and make our lives easier because you know chances are whatever we're doing we're going to have to do it again. Uh, PowerShell allows us to expand upon that and you know with making the whole process process easier for a lot of different tasks in SQL Server. Why use PowerShell? Well first off automation. So in my previous role we had deployments going on uh, pretty much when, when I got there they were doing it but all 
times of the day. Um, I manage to get that, that reined in to a time frame each day. And uh, from there, though, it was still a lot to do to, to actually deploy all the code for all the different deployments across all the different servers. And so I wound up writing a PowerShell script. And with that, I specified to the developers uh, some rules for where their scripts had to be located and the path. And so the path where the scripts are located, I made sure I had my server name in there. I had my database. Uh, all the scripts were you know, located. It had whether it was QA, UAT, or prod. Um, they could have multiple scripts going across multiple databases. So that's another feature of that. Anyway, so I wrote this script and it reached out to our TFS instance there and simply put, I could pass in multiple TFS task IDs at one time into a commandlet that I wrote and this would just go out and one at a time go through those deployments, go get the scripts that were needed, deploy them to the appropriate um, uh, level environment, be it QA, UAT, or prod, the appropriate server, database, and then output the results to a file. Not only would it do that, but it would also um, update TFS and then email the developers that it was done. All of this I had to do before by hand. And this just made life so much easier and freed up a lot of time for other projects. Uh, within PowerShell, you can also it, it can also easily centralize SQL Server processes. So you know, such as backups, <coughs> you may want to use PowerShell for that. Uh, you know, with anything within PowerShell, you can you know you can easily do things from one central location. Accessing third-party libraries with PowerShell here is another great thing. So um, also in the previous role I was in, we had an Oracle database uh, for uh, accounting uh, processes and twice a month we had to go in and perform maintenance across the, on that Oracle database and um, when this was handed to me uh, I was given a demo by the guy who had been doing this previously and he was doing things manually and one of the th manual things he was doing he was having to kick out users uh, that were currently in the database and so he would open up a little uh, power or a little command window uh, for Oracle and run these scripts, pull back everybody who was in there, and then kick them out one at a time. Um, that was just on my list of things I didn't have time for. So I wound up figuring out what library I needed to call to run the Oracle statements or Oracle select queries to access that database and find all those users and not only do that but also generate that statement to kick, kick the users out. So once I had that statement generated in an array, I just went through the array one at a time and running it, running it and kicking all the users out. And um, I have to say it was a lot of fun. The first time I really got to run that, it was at four o'clock in the afternoon, which is, was the designated time for one of the maintenance windows. And I got a big kick out of that when they were calling me or, or people were calling and they were wondering why they couldn't get in the system. Well, it was because I'd kicked them out and, and apparently I was expected to hold people's hand and send them an email and let them know, which I didn't do. <laughs> but it still was funny for me. So anyway. All right, um, PowerShell. Uh, why use PowerShell? All your, the possibilities are endless. Uh, I, I, you know, I like to think you're only limited by your own imagination. Also, your end goal it may not, you may not get to your end goal the nece necessarily the way you think you're going to get there. Um, an example of this I found would be with SSRS. Uh, you can do things with SSRS, with PowerShell, but um, from my experience, it's been a little more involved. Uh, you might have multiple steps to get to where you want to be. Um, in one instance, I had a deployment from a developer and he was doing a bunch of reports and they had to be moved from one location to another in our reporting uh, uh, SSRS server instance. Um, moving them was one thing that could be done easily from the UI. You go in there and you check all the ones you want and you know tell where to 
put them. Well, that's fine, but changing the data source wasn't. So I round up, I, while I moved them manually, since that was easy, I wound up writing a PowerShell script that went and updated the data source for each of those reports. That made life so much easier in that respect, because otherwise I would have had to do those one at a time by hand, and that would have been painful. All right, so some PowerShell gotchas. First off, when you open up PowerShell for the first time, you may encounter issues with the execution policy. And so you may you know, try and run something and it throws an error because of the set, what you have your execution policy set to. So simply running get-execution policy will return you what your current execution policy is. And then uh, followed by that, you can do a set-execution policy and set it to you know, whatever is appropriate for uh, your environment. Uh, personally, I prefer unrestricted and I will typically set my execution policy to that as long as I'm allowed to. Um, some companies might have a group policy uh, out there that will prohibit you from doing this. So, you know, in most cases I found that's not the case, but sometimes they do. Last place I was at, they actually imp implemented that group policy well after we had been using PowerShell for deployments and other stuff. And so I was able to get an exception applied for our group and our team members um, with that. But other than that, um, you know, you could, uh, uh, if they have remote signed, um, you know, download scripts from trusted publishers, uh, they must be signed, th those can be run. Um, all signed, only scripts signed by trusted publishers can be run. Restricted uh, means no scripts can be run. So, um, you know, it depends on where you are, you know, whether or not you, uh, you know, can be unrestricted with your execution policy or not. Also, you can also try uh, running a bypass with your script when uh, you're running it to try and uh, bypass the existing execution policy. Profiles. So in, Pro in PowerShell, one of the things that I found that I didn't realize initially was that the PowerShell, just the shell window and the ISC each have their own profile. And I found this out when I was trying to, I think I developed something, I run it from the ISC and then I went to just see if I could simply call it from, call my commandlet from a shell window with PowerShell and it wouldn't work. And that's when I found out that these two profiles are completely separate. Um, as far as changing the profile location, here was another issue I ran into. Um, I wanted to see if I could move this somewhere else because at the time um, I was having issues with accessing my home directory at my um, work and uh, couldn't necessarily visually go in and look at the profile and open it up and see things. Um, so I was having problems with that. But um, quickly found out, or I, I researched it and found that there really was no way to move this. Um, I don't know if this has changed or not since then. I have not attempted to move this, move a PowerShell profile. Um, and as I've been telling people, if you do find a way, let me know because that would be great. Because sometimes you might need to do that. And you know, change the location of, uh, of your profiles. Variables in memory uh, with PowerShell. These exist for the duration of your session. So, if you're having, you know, sometimes you might have an issue within PowerShell and you can't figure it out, and you're looking at your code and it's just not obvious, and you're trying and trying and trying. And you thought, you know, you've made a change, you troubleshooted something, and it's still not working. Well, close and reopen your PowerShell window. Close and reopen the ISC, whatever you're working in. Close everything out, reopen it, see if that doesn't resolve the error. Because you may have lost track of uh, one of your variables, and that could be stuck in memory and could, could be the cause of your problem. Um, data types in PowerShell will largely be implied and, and handled uh, by PowerShell itself. So um, occasionally you may want to explicitly specify a data type and that's fine too. Um, also null values. Um, I have one script, we'll go over 
um, today. Uh, it was just kind of my testing of some different types of null values in PowerShell when I ran into a specific issue. And uh, we'll take a look at that. But sometimes, you, you know, what you may think are null values are not necessarily null values. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, so PowerShell basics. Um, typically, your naming convention is going to be verb noun, although new is not a verb. And, but largely, it's going to be verb noun. So like we had with our execution policy, you have get, set, um, and just any, anything verb, then noun. Uh, variable declarations, all variables will start with a dollar sign. And comments, um, this is also uh, significantly different from T-SQL. A uh, single line comment will be prefaced with a pound sign. And block comments will be contained within less than and greater than symbols, uh, followed by uh, pound signs just on the inside of either of those. So um, one thing uh, that is a little, I don't know if I'd call it tedious, but a little different about um, PowerShell and SSMS, I like to do a control, um, what is it, control KC and, and you, know, you know, on a block comment section in SSMS. Can't do that in the ISE, at least not currently. So that would be a nice thing to have at some point. But so you do have to manually type those symbols out or those characters out to do your block comments. So just saying. All right, so getting to SQL Server. So one of the things uh, you may utilize within connecting to SQL Server within PowerShell would be the import module SQL PS. And this registers the SQL Server assemblies and snap-ins. And also using SMO or SQL Server Management Objects. This is another method of connecting to a SQL Server instance. Uh, you can also connect to a SQL Server instance by setting up a provider. And I hadn't done this before until um, I saw Sean McCown uh, do some stuff with providers and I thought, wow, that's really cool. And so I started working with it and I have another PowerShell session where everything I do in that session is strictly done with providers. And to do a provider, it's new-ps drive. So we'll see, we'll see some of that in the demos. Uh, let's see here, write host. So um, write host allows you to customize output to your screen. And um, occasionally, uh, I mean, you, you might have something where you're doing write host and a variable, but that's not necessarily something you need to do. You can type a variable and it's going to output. You don't need to include write host with it. But if you have, that's okay. It will still work. Your code will run, and um, the you know sky will not fall. Um, I went to the PowerShell conference. I believe it was at the PowerShell conference one year, and I heard someone there making the statement oh, they did write host with their variable, you know, and that you know they were criticizing them for that. And so I just you know maybe I didn't slump down in my seat, but I just kind of felt like I should <laughs> and realized I've probably done this a number of times. But that's when I thought, you know, my code runs and haters gonna hate. So whatever. You know, you, you're you're doing you and you're writing your code and if it works, awesome. That we're just here to get the job done. <laughs> Let's see here. Invoke SQL command. This will allow you to call uh, SQL statements from a PowerShell window. Uh, occasionally, you might have a reason to run a SQL statement in lieu of something that would be uh, more of a, a PowerShell command. And, and we'll take a look at a case where that applies. Get child item. This is exactly what it says. It gets the item, it gets the items and child items from a specified location or object. Um, provider. Um, when you set a provider, it's like working from a command line. So once in the provider, you can even do a dir there, and it's just like working from a DOS command window. So um, another thing with PowerShell, you have single quotes versus double quotes. 
So within SSMS and T-SQL, largely you're using uh, single quotes for everything. Um, but in PowerShell, single quotes and double quotes mean different things. So single quotes, uh, PowerShell is going to treat your string just as a string. Whereas with double quotes, you have uh, PowerShell is going to look at that string and look for special characters or variables within that string. So um, sometimes, I mean, you, and you can build these different ways. You can you can incorporate variables using either double quotes or single quotes and build your string. You know, we'll we'll look at you know different methods of this, and and I have different you know I've done it different ways in, in the in the demo. So we'll see some of both. All right, yay, demos. Let me change my screen here. All right, I'm assuming this is okay and, and we're able to see um, my PowerShell ISE screen here. Correct, that looks yes, good. Yeah, yeah. Text size looks decent. Do what? Sorry, I text didn't... size looks decent. Text size looks decent? Because it's huge on my side. <laughs> He has this, this, the largest size. resolution ever. It looks great on my giant screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Because I, you know, I think y'all can see in the lower right hand corner, it's bumped up to one seventy here. So <laughs> this is this is what I've been using for. I haven't changed it since. Uh, uh, the last SQL Saturday, and it's, okay it's just Aaron because a lot of times I'll do it at one hundred forty percent, and that's enough. Okay, okay, okay. So if it's just Aaron, then whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have a little simple script here. Um, you know, if you have done any development in the past, be it in school or otherwise, you know, you've taken a class. Um, you know, the typically the first thing you start off with is your "Hello World" statement. Um, you know. Caveat here: I do have a development background, so a lot of things that you know come that may come easy for me. And, and PowerShell did take some learning, and you know, to getting used to the syntax and everything else. But you know, there are a lot of concepts that make him easier for myself and other folks with a development background that may not come as easy for someone that doesn't have that. That's okay. That's why we're here. We're learning. So just to start off, we're just going to do um, a simple sample here with this and so our first statement we're doing um, we're setting a variable a to howdy PowerShell VC we're doing a write host a and then follow just by um, the variable itself and then write host hello PowerShell VC so as you can see we've output our first two they're identical so like I said you can do a write host you can do it without in this case it's not going to make a bit of difference and who cares if anybody doesn't you know criticizes it who cares it's not their code all right so that's really simple let's move on to something else a little more substance here all right so as a DBA we have typically you know typically we'll get tasked with doing things as doing things like taking big databases offline so I have a script for this so starting out with importing my SQL PS module, um, I have a list. I'm declaring an array for a list of databases I want to keep. I'm clearing this out in case I've run this already once before. And then also I'm listing out my system databases or, or some databases that I know are going to be there and I want to hold on to. Um, in this case, I am connecting to a single SQL Server instance uh, using a uh, SQL Server Management Objects connection string. You can do this for multiple servers. It's just you know a matter of modifying the code um, accordingly. So, so once I've set up my connection, come down here and I'm get first. I'm just selecting my databases and where they're not in the system DB and getting a status. And in fact, let me see, my database is keep. I don't think I'm using that in here, so ignore that array. We're not going to use that. We're using, we're just, we're keeping everything that's on our system databases. We're leaving those online. So let's see, then databases, I'm setting this to whatever is in 
my uh, server.databases list where they're not in system, the systemdb array and and the status, whoops, there we go, uh, fix that, um, and the status is equal to normal. So here's another thing about PowerShell versus SSMS and T-SQL. Um, here is my comparison operator for not in. You know, it's, it's largely similar to SSMS, which you would do in T-SQL. Um, then we do an and, same thing. But then we come down here, and our comparison operator for equal is dash EQ. So if I wanted to, we can just look at these real quick. Do a dash, and then this is, the IntelliSense is going to list out all the different options for my comparison operators here. And these are, you know, it's syntactically, they're not the same, you know, in, you know, T-SQL, you're going to just do an equal sign for this. But in this case, you know, in PowerShell, you're not. You're going to use these comparison operators. And if you need to find one or if you're not sure what to use, that's what Google is for. And, you know, initially when I started writing PowerShell, I was using equal signs or I was trying to use an equal sign as a comparison operator and it was not working and I had to figure out what the heck was going on. So I did. I did my research and found out that the comparison operators in PowerShell are different. So that is another thing to take note of. All right. So I've got my list of databases. I'm going to come down here and for each database in my databases list, we're doing a for each loop. And also here's another thing. I could call this anything. I could call it, you know, puppy dog or whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm just declaring the database variable here. So for for each database in databases down here, um, I am building a script. Why am I doing a SQL script in PowerShell? Well, in this case, if I came down here and I did ran um, database set offline, well, if there's any current connections to the database that I'm taking offline, this process will hang. And it will sit there and it will stare at me and it will just hang. So in this case, we want to run the T-SQL statement so we're able to incorporate the rollback immediate portion of this and, and when we set our databases offline. So any current transactions will get rolled back and our database will go offline like we want it to. Um, and, and you know, there's some cases where this is the more appropriate solution to the problem. Not not all the time, but sometimes. So if we switch over here, I think we're looking at, we're going to do our 2012 instance. Yep, 2012. So all my 2012 databases, that's 2014. So my databases refresh, they're all currently online. So we'll come back over here. Okay, so I'm going to run this. I'm going to throw some warnings. No big deal. Okay, so and then we output our status first. So if we come back over here, I'm going to refresh this. All my databases are offline now. Um, as far as setting them online, I'm going to hit the easy button in here and comment out my offline statement. Uh, this time I am going to use the uh, database.setOnline operation. And we're going to take out, comment that out, and uncomment our operation for setting them online. Pull back that databases list. And go back over here. Refresh again. Oh, beautiful. They're all online again. Wonderful. All right. So moving on. Let's look at stopping SQL Server Agent on multiple servers. So, you know, occasionally as a DBA, you might have to go stop Agent or stop SQL Server or do something across multiple SQL Server instances. And, you know, that can be 
you know, remoting at each server, that can be time consuming and tedious. So especially if you have a lot of servers you're having to perform this operation on. So instead, you can do this with PowerShell. So um, at the beginning here, I'm loading my assembly for the SQL WMI management. Um, I'm passing in just the name of my machine here because I have several SQL Server instances running. And then doing a for each machine and machines. And actually, let's go over here. And let's see. Services, get my services pulled up. And I'll drag this over. It should be running and we'll check it first. So I can make this a little smaller. There we go. All right, so I have three instances, but one is an older 2016 instance, and so that one we're going to ignore. Um, so right now for let's see for the agent for 2014 and 2012, those are both running. Come back over here to my PowerShell script. We'll comment this out first. So this is going to pull back all three of my instances. We're just going to do a select on the name and see. So I'm filtering. So I'm doing a get service, passing in whatever my machine name is from machine and machines, and then filtering on the name or a name like SQL agent. So in PowerShell also, your wildcard symbols are going to be asterisks, not uh, uh, percentage signs. So um, that's different from T-SQL, but similar to Windows. And also, so with uh, in our machine, so we're passing machine, but then we're doing, see, where object, and then dollar sign underscore period. This is, you know, basically we're implying what our computer name is here with this. So whatever this is, our machine dot name. And then or object or name like or, or I'm sorry, uh, where the service name like SQL agent. Yes, because we're getting the service back. Okay. All right, so come down here. So now I'm going to stop the service. I'm doing a get service followed by my, passing in my machine name. Okay, so looking at all the services, looking at where the name equals SQL agent, and also the name not like SQL agent 2016 because we're ignoring that one. And then with that information, once I have those services, I'm doing a stop service on each of those. So this will take a second to run. So if we go back over to our services, do a refresh, they're not running anymore. I can come over here and do the same thing. Just change that to a start service. Refresh again. Looky there, they're going again. Do we have any questions so far or is everyone good? Do we know? No. All no, is, no sorry, all is good. All is, all is good. Okay. All quiet on the Western Front. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at null values. This is kind of a weird little thing that I ran into here. So I was trying to access null values, I believe, from a Windows system uh, variables, something having to do with the Windows system uh, and, and look for null values for something. And I wasn't getting what I thought I was supposed to get. So I put together this script and I was testing different things for null values. So testing an empty string, testing a string with base spaces, testing for a string name null, set to null, and also testing system DB null. So I'm setting system DB null to explicitly whatever to a system dot db null value. And then also I I'm declaring and testing an integer value. 
explicitly making sure this isn't injured and I'm setting it to null. So let me clear my screen and run this. And if anybody wants the scripts, I can I can you know supply this. But this is this this was purely written largely for just testing in my own education and knowledge, and I thought it was really interesting. But just testing for nulls with just different methods. So let's look at this. So looking at a string and say, looking at it to see if it says is null or empty. So everything is null except my string of spaces and okay I'll give it that you know spaces we put spaces it's not empty. So and then coming in the next one uh, testing if the string is equal to null and my empty string is not null. That's crazy because it should be. You know, at least in most cases, you know, you know, in our world in T-SQL, it should be null. And then um, next, see, our null string is null. Our DB null is uh, considered not null, and also our string of spaces is considered not null. So, looking for a null variable. Uh, once again, our empty string is considered null. And our null variable is null, but then system DB null and our space of string, those are both not null. And testing empty string. So you get the idea. This is, you know, all this just came out very odd. And, you know, with it, with results that I didn't necessarily expect. But it's something to consider when working with PowerShell and you're expecting a null value but you may not necessarily be getting that null value. So say you're doing a comparison and you're looking for, you know, you're comparing your, your variable and looking, you know, you know, compare is it equal to null, but your, your results aren't pan, panning out. Think about this and, and, and realize that, you know, it may not, PowerShell may not necessarily think it's null. So that's really something to be aware of when you're working, you know, within PowerShell and working, you know, and, and looking for null variables. All right, so let's see here. We are using a provider in this script, and let's see, I forget what we're doing here. Ah, we're just outputting our databases, good times. All right, so uh, first off, we're doing an import module SQL PS, and in this case, I'm working with both my 2014 and 2012 instances. I have put these into a array called servers. And this is one method of declaring an array. Another method of declaring an array is server uh, here is using system.collections.arrayList. And one of the things that I found very useful in PowerShell uh, is doing multidimensional arrays. Uh, when I mentioned I did my deployments, I, I wrote the uh, a script to automate our deployments. I used uh, a multi-dimensional array to access everything for a single deployment. So uh, if I was doing five deployments, I would populate my multi-dimensional array and then go through and access the elements of each record or each, each uh, line in that array to get to all the elements for a single deployment. So I'm declaring my server array uh, ver uh, array variable, and then I'm going to clear it just in case I've run this before. Then down here, um, we're doing a for each loop uh, for our servers list, and once again, I'm calling this for each item in servers. I could call this anything, but I'm using item here, and I'm populating my server array variable and doing a split on the backslash in uh, what's coming in from servers. And uh, you'll see what's uh, going on here with this in just a moment. Um, I'm I have named instances on my machine, um, but this will be, uh, we're going to handle um, the named instances or the default instances, and we need to do that for connecting to our uh, provider. Okay, so next thing we're doing here is a for loop. If you 
are, if you have a development background and you're familiar with this, great. If not, it's just a simple concept where you are declaring an integer valuable value here, uh, setting it to zero. Um, then i is less than the count in our server array variable. And then finally, we increment our i variable. So within our for loop, we're coming in here and we're looking at server array and we're looking at the element one for we're looking at i1 in this case i1 is going to be the name of our instance so i split this and i populated my server array variable so i0 is going to be sql kitten i1 is going to be 2014 sql server 2014 so come down here so if whatever is at i1 is equal to null, then our instance is going to be equal to default. Otherwise, instance is equal to whatever is at i1. Come down here. Our server name, we're setting that to what's at i0. And we're going to output that before we do anything. Also, I have, I have a couple of commented out statements here, um, different methods. So if I could, I could uncomment this. And Basically, I'm setting this var the variable blah to what's uh, to essentially what I did for my right host. You can see with right host, I am outputting um, everything for that's within our server name uh, for uh, so server array i zero followed by instance, but blah is doing the same thing. Uh, right ho the right host statement I'm using double quotes. And I have my variables in blah. I'm doing single quotes and I'm building my string. So single quotes uh, and uh, close my single quote plus server array i0 plus my backslash plus my instance and then finish it off with a bunch of asterisks. Server root is going to be uh, SQL server uh, colon backslash SQL backslash uh, my server name. This will always be the same. This, so this syntax here, this will always be the same for you, this first part. Um, location one, um, setting that to whatever, uh, my setting that to my server name, uh, colon backslash my instance name followed by databases. And then we come down here and actually create our drive. So we're going to name it whatever our server name is pass in our server root, and then our PS provider is going to be SQL Server. This, if, if you're connecting to SQL Server, this will always be the same. Then we set our location to location one. Databases, if there's anything, we've run this before, we're clearing it, just clearing it with the single quotes, and then populating databases with get child item. So this should pull back all the databases on each of my instances. And then for each database and databases, I'm just doing a write host and building it uh, with single quotes and, and my variable and database equal database and output those. And then finally, I set my location back to my C drive and do a remove PS drive for cleanup. So here this, whoops, there we go. All right, so as you can see, I output my server name information twice. You know, we did that two different ways and it output exactly the same in both cases. So come down here, uh, output from when we actually declare our drive location and set that up. And then I'm outputting my databases. So here we have our 2014 instance databases. And then same thing with 2012, we have all those databases. Coming over here, using an SMO connection, uh, doing an import module SQL PS. We have a couple of different arrays again, uh, using system collections array list, clearing those out in case we've run this already. And let's see here. So I'm passing in, I have my server, that I'm making connection to. We're just going to connect to our 2014 instance in this case. 
Um, this can be written to do, you can do multiple servers. So that is possible also with SMO, we just haven't done it here. And um, then also I'm declaring my database variable with uh, microsoft.sqlserver.management.smo.database. And we're setting our database uh, variable to um, DBA admin. So I'm looking at my admin database for some stuff. So I'm getting a list here after I have my query. I have a query that I'm building that I'm running. And I'm populating servers with what comes back from that query. So let's see, select, select distinct DB server name. So I'm pulling that back from my list. And then we're populating. So I'm pulling back a servers list. It looks like I'm going through multiple servers here with this. So then we come down here for each server in servers.db server name. Notice that I am explicitly using that here. Um, in this case, you have to do that. So I'm clearing out my databases to keep array. I'm making a second, I'm creating a second server connection. And so I'm passing into that server connection, we are connected to multiple servers here, um, whatever is in server. So from there, I have my database is to keep query and I'm passing in that where the server name is, or the DB server name equal to server. And I'm running that. And we're doing, we're gonna output the status of the databases. So for each database in our server 2.databases, if databases to keep, my database name uh, doesn't contain the database.name and systemdb not contains database.name, then we're doing the output here. So this script, this came about um, partially as a result of some work I was doing with a server migration. I was using a table-driven uh, setup to build the strings that I was then putting into PowerShell to uh, just kick off some automated migration scripts using within PowerShell. So this was kind of this is kind of a very high level instance of that, not totally going into that because that was way more complicated than the session, the session calls for. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so in this case, we're just outputting certain, certain databases and their status. So very, very simple. You know, a lot of this can be modified to uh, serve your purposes. Uh, you may ne not necessarily want to do all the things that I'm doing in here, but it's just a sample of what can be done. Um, let's see here. Okay, so a uh, favorite topic of everyone's is PowerShell, or not PowerShell, <laughs> replication. Replication, so if you're a DBA and you've done any amount of replication, you know, it can be fun and it can also be kind of painful at times depending on what you have to do. Uh, but sometimes you have to reinitialize replication. And one of the things with reinitializing is if any indexes or triggers or operations or things that, that have been applied at your subscriber and you reinitialize, it's you're probably going to be blowing those away. So so before you reinitialize, it's always necessary to go and generate those things and set them aside, you know, because if you blow them away, you need to reapply them, you know, so, so we always need to do that. I used to do this with T-SQL and it was long and painful and I wanted a better method. So um, I came up with a PowerShell script for this and this is, it's fairly simple. Um, so once again, import module SQL PS. I have my servers um, array that I'm declaring here. And, and I'm just adding, in this case, we're just going to do these one at a time. So right now we're set up to do, um, let's see, my SQL uh, Server 2014 instance. I'm looking at different databases. We're looking at the Stack Overflow database on this one. Yes, that is the uh, same database as the website. Um, Brent Ozar 
demoed this in a session that I went to or pre-con that I went to of his and that was something a sample database they used and they passed around a USB drive and I happened to get it and so I've kind of taken advantage of that and used it ever since at least like an old copy of it so so anyway I have an output path here so I'm gonna dump out my files uh, to a folder on my desktop and so I have a for each loop for each server and servers and I'm setting up my instance name um, I originally uh, where I came from the last place I was at we had we didn't have any named instances so I quickly just worked up since I have named instance I quickly worked up the named instance uh, piece for this just to uh, get us over the hump here but I mean fixing this and uh, making this more dynamic is not hard and I've done plenty of that in the other scripts so I'm setting my instance name and my server name outputting both of those and then I'm setting up uh, outputs for my scripts um, I'm doing also one for views you may have to do views um, I, I have that commented out below you can output or not it's not really right now it's just outputting system views and I haven't modified that to exclude those so then uh, we're outputting the path for our indexes and trigger files we're setting up our provider location and uh, creating our, our new PS drive setting our location to location 2 in this case and and we're doing a item and then from there DB dot and then for, for so whatever we're populating into DB with get item we're taking that and doing DB dot tables and then for each of our indexes within our tables where our index is not clustered and is not unique and then for each of those we have a pipe we pipe to that um, script those out followed by ah okay there we go scrolling 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 followed by some syntax here so why are we doing this well we want our output here to be properly formatted because we don't want to have to go back and format it after the fact and so we're having to add a character turn and a line feed at the end of each of our index scripts and so that is done by adding in um, a C, tick and then R tick N and then go and the same thing R N and I'm getting a phone call and I don't know why oh my goodness sorry about that <laughs> the hazards are working from home okay so as I was saying <laughs> we format the syntax uh, at the end of our script and then we output we're doing an output to our indexes file same with the trigger file and so let me clear my screen and we'll run this and I should have this open here we go and drag this over so this output a couple of it looks like a couple, a couple of things for our indexes script here I don't think I have any triggers that this is going to generate but I have used this for triggers before and it was beautiful and I was very happy with it okay so that's a few more than I thought so it's generating some indexes here dumped all those out so when I replicate things over and I try and run that run that again it'll reapply those come back over here let's see what else do we want to do let's look at we can look at our doodle poodle database I think that generates a little bit that's on so we'll change our instance name and we'll run this and generate doodle poodle and what did that get us a couple more scripts here got something in our indexes 
currently no triggers. So we have those, those generated. So, um, you know, same thing, you can you, pass in, um, you can do this, you can pass in multiple databases, you can pass in multiple servers, you can set this up any way you want and, you know, do all that, point at your subscriber database and kick it off and, you know, subscriber server and kick it off and generate everything in a relatively short period of time, uh, whereas with T-SQL this would be yeah, just at, l at the very least, a tad more painful to do. Uh, PowerShell, in this case, has made this process a lot easier. Um, I think, let's see, it's 12.04 my time, so we're running a little bit over. Um, I won't run this because I think it'll fail here. Here's uh, something I encountered recently, and I include the link to where I got this code from. Um, I had to, last week I had to add a specific account to the administrator's group on multiple servers. Well, I took that, I generate the list of servers. I have one here, but if the, for the client that I worked with, I just put that list in an array variable and then just ran through it and just uh, powered through this, boom, 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 and got all that done. And, and so that's, that's also something that you can do with PowerShell. Um, I had that done in a very short period of time. I had 30 servers to do that on. And um, this script ran seamlessly. It only threw errors on one where, uh, ones where the account already existed. And, and, and that was the only thing, and that's no big deal. So anyway, that is the end of my demos here. Do we have any questions? We don't have any questions right at the moment, but if uh, anyone wants to ask one, uh, we've got a couple minutes, we can squeeze a few in uh, before we go. Okay. okay. While we're waiting for that, I'll go ahead and say thank you, Amy, for uh, presenting for us. Well, thank you for having me, I appreciate it. So the first question here is, uh, can we import server names from CSV file and run T-SQL scripts like SQL version, et cetera, on multiple instances? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, uh, you, you can import. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, you can import. Um, you, can, you can get your list of servers from, from anything. You can, you know, maybe have that table driven and import those from a table. You can import it. You can do it from a CSV file, from a text file. Uh, you can get those in there any way you choose. It's just a matter of yeah. uh, having the right syntax for for whatever your method is. But yes, and then yeah, and, run multiple oh, scripts. Sorry, I was just going to call out and the registered servers file as well as central management servers are in the SQL PowerShell provider, so you can actually access them there on the SQL Server drive. Oh, cool! I didn't. I honestly didn't realize that. I was. I had just recently uh, uh, tried to pull back. I, I, I was doing it through another means, uh, pulling back all the servers and the providers. So in, in my case, it was. I, I just did it really quick and dirty. I just uh, did it. I queried for them and then formatted it and stuck it in my PowerShell script and ran it that way, just to get things done. But um, yeah, even even better if you can pull it back from a provider. That 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 works too. Uh, any more questions? That'll be the strangest uh, session if we only have one question. I don't think we've ever had just one question. I, 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 I said this is very beginning. This is very beginning. Well, we also have the question. Uh, it says, would you be sharing the script, which you had said earlier that you would? Um, do, you, do you have a short link uh, for the, the script? Oh, gosh. Um, not offhand, no. Um, if folks want to uh, shoot me an email. Okay, well, um, we also have uh, sqlps.io slash code. So if you send it to me, I can just put it in our, in our repository. Okay, that'll work too. I'll have to uh, get everything tidied up here and I can shoot that over. Okay, great.
we don't have any more questions yet, uh, so okay. I guess we will just uh, oh, wait. Yeah, Maybe we one do more. One. I like this question too. Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so Robert uh, Deval, uh, man, man, oh, I'm gonna mess up that name, and I think it's French. Let's see, Delval. <laughs> uh, what are your favorite sources for script samples? Oh gosh, um, usually I just if if I'm looking for something, um, you know, uh, of course I'm going to just Google it and uh, search and. It, it just depends on what I'm looking to do and how I'm how I'm looking to get there. You know, I, I've I've done so much, and sometimes, you know, I try to reference my own stuff when I can. <laughs> but um, I think there's a lot of stuff out out there available within the, the PowerShell community. Um, uh, there's some of the the more knowledgeable folks, the, the scripting guy. I forget his name off the top of my head. I know he's a scripting guy. But uh, he's a good resource and has some pretty good stuff. And um, I, I mean, there's just so much. And I really like you know, uh, just... Phil Factor and Laerte Jr. Um, on on uh, uh, Simple Talk. Simple, yeah, Simple Talk. That one's uh, there. They've always been a favorite resource of mine. Okay. Yeah. It, it, you know, re really, when I'm researching and, and trying to figure out something, it's it's. Uh, more of just, you know, I'm trying, I, I'm looking and I find different things. I'm testing things and I'm seeing what works and what doesn't for me. Um, I got, I, I was working on one script week before last and I've kind of tabled it and I need to pick it up again and do some more work on it. Um, I was just trying to uh, do something as simple as get a list of years into an array based on files in a directory and it was, it's, currently it's returning the years plus one element of zero. So I'm like, well, not what I want. <laughs> so I'm probably doing something wrong. But anyway, it just depends on what you're looking for and what you're trying to do. Oh, I, I forgot. I also have um, uh, a repository of script samples. at uh, If you go to netnerds.net, um, there's a PowerShell SMO recipes. I can paste it here in chat. And oh, yeah, I see that you see you said Devalier. Which actually sounds totally like a Cajun name. Um, so <laughs> it does because I was like, "Oh, that's French." But yeah, I, it, it, there, there's so many um, French people. Uh, sorry, uh, well, French and Spanish in the Cajun culture. So I, I just pasted that. Um, if so, if it's blog.netnerds.net/smo-recipes, um, and that that doesn't have a lot of the SQL PS stuff. I know that Mike Fowles' blog. He has a lot of. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, code for SQL PS and mine more revolves around the SMO part, which is more of what I do. Yeah, he, he's a good resource, and, and your stuff is good as well. Um, you and you and I've heard something. You have um, what was it? There, uh, new stuff for SQL Server. I heard something about this. So yeah, well, we have. I have. Uh, I, I started a project called DBA Tools. And that's at dbatools.io. Yes, yes. It's a huge community project. We actually have over 33 yeah. contributors um, on the GitHub repository. And then also Rob Sewell has dbareports.io, which is kind of like a sister mm -hmm. project. And his is super cool. It's like an inventory um, project. And uh, SQL agent goes out and collects a whole bunch of information. And then he, um, he puts it in both SSRS and uh, Power BI. Um, and yeah, so, and there, there are a lot of code samples, um, with Cortana. The, yeah. And Cortana, but yes, it's, he actually has a, uh, didn't we put up one of your videos? Ooh, I'm getting... videos on, on the SQL collaborative video, uh, YouTube channel. Oh yeah. So showing... if you go to, I'm, I'm getting Aaron's like, we need to wrap up. Okay. So if you go to dbatools.io slash YouTube, <laughs> um, that's our channel. And you can see Rob talk to his computer, use Cortana and get information about his repository. Cortana. I love that pronunciation. Dude, I know it's so freaking cool. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys call the Microsoft cloud product? Oh, Azure. Azure? Azure. 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 Yeah, I say Azure. Azure. See, in in the UK, it's Azure. Azure. Like Azure. The, Azure. Like the like the <laughs> color blue. Azure. It's beautiful when you say it. 
I should do that in a, in a meeting. I do it. I do the American <laughs> pr pronunciation in in oh, meeting okay. just to wind them up. So, yeah. Asher. Oh, okay. <laughs> pass, pass it on. Pass it on. <laughs> well, thank you so much, everyone, well, for means... joining us. It's been a lot of fun. I, I I could keep going, but Aaron was like, "We got to wrap it up and go." Yep, people need to get back from lunch. Yep, they're dropping. So cool. All right. All right, folks. We'll see you again in a little over a month. Awesome. See everybody soon. Thank you so much, Amy. It's been a blast. Thank you. For, thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amy.